The night of June 18, 2025, will be remembered as a pivotal moment in SpaceX's Starship program, as Ship 36 erupted in a dramatic explosion during a static fire test at the Massey's test stand. With Flight 10 tentatively targeted for a June 29 launch, this catastrophic failure has not only delayed the timeline, but also raised serious technical questions about the design integrity of the Block 2 Starship architecture. Let's break down the sequence of events, examine probable causes from an engineering perspective, identify corrective measures needed, and look ahead to what this means for SpaceX's next steps. In the days leading up to the explosion, Ship 36 remained at the Massey's test site, where it had recently completed a successful single-engine static fire on June 16. A preliminary step toward the full-duration six-engine test was preparing for. On Wednesday night, SpaceX began the standard propellant loading procedure, filling the bottom oxygen tank to capacity and the upper methane tank partially, a typical procedure for static fire tests. Engine chill-down likely commenced, and around that time, a routine flap actuation test was carried out. Seconds after this flap test, everything changed. High-speed imagery captured by NASA space flight cameras offers a rare, detailed visual timeline of the event, helping to reconstruct what likely happened. The first few frames show Ship 36 in a stable condition, venting cryogenic gases normally. But then, dense white clouds, possibly from a sudden cryogenic release, appear around the vehicle's forward section. This suggests that something within the upper methane header tank or payload bay area catastrophically failed. One widely accepted hypothesis is the rupture of a composite overwrap pressure vessel located near the methane header tank. These COPVs, used for storing high-pressure helium or nitrogen used in pressurization systems, are arranged concentrically around transfer plumbing. A failure here, whether due to overpressure, brittle fracture from cryo-exposure, or faulty composite material, could have punctured the tank wall and severed adjacent plumbing, resulting in a violent and uncontrolled release of both methane and oxygen. In subsequent frames, the vehicle's skin visibly rips. The unzipping appears to begin from the nose cone region down to the forward dome. This suggests that the upper tank section experienced a massive overpressure or structural collapse, violently breaching the pressure boundary. As the pressurized methane and LOX mixed in the oxygen-rich environment, combustion began almost immediately. What followed was a series of fireballs, culminating in the total destruction of the vehicle and its support infrastructure. Geostationary satellites captured the explosion's thermal signature, visible from orbit due to its magnitude, offering a broad view of the event's scale. The National Weather Service radar, designed to track weather patterns, detected the heat and debris plume, providing real-time data on the explosion's spread. The fire continued burning for several hours after the explosion, indicating sustained leakage of fuel. This is a sign that methane isolation valves may have been stuck open, or that power was lost to the automated control systems managing the tank farm. Elon Musk offered an early insight into the Ship 36 explosion, stating that preliminary data suggests a nitrogen COPV located in the payload bay failed below its proof pressure. Proof pressure is the pressure level a COPV is intentionally tested to, usually around 1.5 times its maximum expected operating pressure, to ensure structural integrity under extreme conditions. Failing below this threshold implies the COPV ruptured at a pressure well within its supposed safety margin. If this finding holds true, it effectively rules out overpressurization as the primary cause, contradicting earlier speculation that the failure stemmed from a pressure spike or faulty relief valve. Instead, it points toward a structural or material defect in the COPV itself, such as fiber delamination, poor bonding between the composite wrap and liner, manufacturing flaws, or long-term cryogenic stress damage all of which could cause a premature rupture even under nominal conditions. Musk also noted that if confirmed, this would be the first time this specific COPV design has ever failed in such a manner, highlighting the unusual nature of the incident and the potential need for a design review or requalification campaign. Despite the severity of the explosion, Musk referred the incident as a minor scratch and acknowledged there is still room for improvement, indicating that design or procedural refinements will likely follow. Meanwhile, the FAA confirmed that since the explosion occurred during ground testing, which is not a licensed activity, it does not trigger a formal FAA-led mishap investigation, leaving SpaceX solely responsible for diagnosing and addressing the failure. The company is expected to conduct a thorough internal investigation in the coming days to determine whether the nitrogen COPV failure was truly the root cause of the anomaly, or if it was a symptom of a deeper structural or systems-level issue. With the failure occurring during a ground test rather than in flight, the diagnostic process is significantly more manageable. Engineers will be able to analyze the wreckage in detail, 
examine telemetry, and reconstruct the failure timeline to pinpoint what went wrong. Looking ahead, several design and procedural improvements will likely be prioritized to prevent similar failures in future vehicles. Strengthening the structural reliability of COPVs, either through enhanced composite materials, better mounting methods, or redundant pressure relief systems, could help prevent sudden ruptures. In addition, tighter quality control standards during manufacturing, especially for upper stage assemblies and plumbing, will be critical. Reinforcing the steel structure of feed lines and tank domes, either by increasing wall thickness or adding internal supports, could increase their ability to withstand unexpected pressure spikes. Finally, upgrades to the Massey's tank farm control systems will likely be considered. Adding redundant power sources and automated valve isolation systems could prevent prolonged propellant leaks in the event of power loss or control failure, which may have contributed to the extended fire after the explosion. SpaceX released an official statement shortly after the incident, acknowledging a major anomaly and confirming that no personnel were harmed thanks to an established safety perimeter. They also coordinated with local authorities to secure the site. The Brownsville Fire Department responded swiftly, helping contain and monitor the blaze. Local residents reported loud booms and minor structural damage like cracked windows, but no injuries. The Massey static fire stand bore the full brunt of the explosion. The gantry structure that housed the ship quick disconnect mechanism was completely destroyed in the explosion, and the test stand itself has sustained extensive structural damage. All of the structural components have been either violently torn apart, bent, or vaporized under intense thermal and mechanical stress. The upper sections appear crumpled and twisted beyond repair, with multiple support trusses sheared off or missing entirely. Critical load-bearing members have collapsed, and the entire assembly has lost its geometric integrity. This level of destruction strongly indicates that a new stand needs to be rebuilt, rather than repaired. Visual analysis suggests that the flame trench experienced significant overpressure. The fireball's intensity likely warped trench walls, collapsed underground supports, and destroyed vent ducts. Propellant transfer lines were almost certainly ruptured as well as evidenced by the continued fuel burn. Fortunately, the propellant storage tanks remained intact, averting a chain reaction that might have engulfed the entire Massey's test site and damaged critical infrastructure, showcasing the robustness of SpaceX's safety measures. Additionally, the vehicle was not fully fueled, which limited the scale of the blast and prevented an even more catastrophic outcome. In the coming weeks, SpaceX is expected to replace the compromised steel components, rebuild damaged sections of the flame trench, and upgrade thermal shielding around sensitive areas, especially since critical components may have melted or suffered heat distortion. Given SpaceX's rapid construction capabilities, Massey's test stand may be restored in two to three months, especially with workforce reassignment from ongoing projects like Pad B or the orbital tank farm expansion. The recurring failures in Block 2 Starship vehicles are beginning to cast doubt on the robustness of the current design iteration. The first two Block 2 flight tests, Flight 7 and 8, both ended in mid-air destruction due to propellant leak in the attic section and a hardware issue in one of the engines, which caused unintended propellant mixing and ignition. In response, SpaceX implemented several design changes in the next vehicle, Ship 35, which flew in Flight 9. However, that vehicle also faced issues. During pre-launch preparations, Ship 35 experienced anomalies during its static fire test and had to undergo engine replacements. An additional static fire test and a separate spin prime test before being cleared for flight. Despite these corrective measures, a mid-flight propellant leak caused the vehicle to lose attitude control and disintegrate during descent. Now, with Ship 36 exploding on the ground before even reaching full engine testing, a broader systemic issue seems likely. The next ship in the pipeline, Ship 37, is currently inside Megabay 2 undergoing engine installation. Given recent events, it will likely be the first to incorporate lessons learned from Ship 36's failure. Following closely is Ship 38, which is already fully stacked and preparing for cryogenic proof testing. Modifications to this vehicle, including deeper structural or plumbing upgrades, will also be implemented. Ideally, both Ship 37 and 38 flight tests will be used to validate the new design fixes through successful ground and flight testing. Their performance is critical in restoring confidence in the Block 2 vehicles before SpaceX transitions to the next generation Block 3 architecture. That said, there's a possibility SpaceX could skip these remaining Block 2 ships altogether and shift focus directly to Block 3. However, skipping those would be an extremely bold move, as each Block 2 vehicle offers an opportunity for incremental design improvements, especially in response to failures. Every test, 
even those that end in destruction, provides critical data that helps refine future designs. Additionally, moving directly to Block 3 could significantly delay the next flight test, since the first Block 3 vehicle, Ship 39, has not yet begun stacking. Ultimately, the explosion of Ship 36 serves as a stark reminder of how unforgiving rocket development can be. But if SpaceX's history is any indicator, from early Falcon 1 failures to the explosive learning curve of Starship series, the company thrives on iteration through failure. With enough focus and engineering manpower, Starship testing could resume in a matter of weeks.